In the journey of becoming the best version of ourselves, we often get lost in the vortex of rigid thinking about success. If I do this, I will succeed. But life doesn't always go as we wish. If everything were that easy, we wouldn't have to search for the secrets to achieving success. While many people choose to follow the advice of friends or immerse themselves in thousands of tips online, What's truly important is recognizing the habits that are hindering us on our path to true success and happiness. So how do we overcome these obstacles? The answer is to start by identifying them. We need to accept the fact that some of our daily habits are acting as barriers on our way to success and happiness. Therefore, in today's video, we'll dive into 10 anti-stoic habits to remove from your life immediately. These habits are not only alien to the spirit of Stoicism, a philosophy of acceptance and self-mastery, but also prevent us from achieving peace and progress in life. If you find yourself guilty of any of these 10 habits, take it as a sign to make a change immediately. Let's explore this video together to the end and remove these habits from our lives. Make way for a brighter future filled with self-control and peace in the spirit of music. Stoicism Habit Number 1. Blaming I've often heard people around me frequently blame their lives, saying, I grew up with a lot of blame in the family, or if only my parents could have, or my first marriage was nothing but blame, if only we could have, or if the managers of my company could understand. Criticism and blaming don't help at all. We would be much more effective without the blaming syndrome like a ghost that has been and continues to powerfully infiltrate and saw pain through many corners of life. It needs to stop. Blame unpredictably transforms in every frown, every mocking breath, or the yelling full of accusations. It's a formidable enemy that hides in the darkness of clarity. Facing it is not just a battle of patience, but also a challenging journey. However, this battle contains immense value a promise of liberation and peace, making every effort worthwhile. Indeed, every difficulty and every challenge contains a precious opportunity for us to train ourselves to seek maturity and inner strength. Instead of looking outward and seeking the root of the problem in others or circumstances, we need to look inward. Ask yourself, what could I have done differently in this situation? How can I avoid falling into a similar situation in the future? The answers to these questions not only help us overcome current difficulties, but also equip us with the ability to face and solve problems more effectively in the future. As taught by Epictetus, one of the great Stoic philosophers, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. His teachings show us that accepting responsibility not only helps us move closer to inner peace, but also to become the best version of ourselves. Blaming is a game where no one wins. By giving up this habit, we not only open up a new world of freedom and inner strength, but also create a space for progress, happiness, and inner peace. This is where every challenge is a lesson, and every day it is an opportunity to become better. Habit number two, cursing. Just like any other habit, cursing is easy to develop and very hard to quit. Sometimes, you might not even realize that you're cursing. However, you can change this habit by acknowledging that you have a problem and making an effort to correct it. Eliminating negative speech and cursing is not just a step forward in terms of language, but also a testament to mental and intellectual freedom. Cursing, often a manifestation of anger and helplessness, is a sign that we're losing control over our surroundings. Imagine a stressful day at work. You come home only to find that a beloved item has been broken due to a family member's carelessness. The immediate reaction might be to get angry and swear a storm of negative words directed at that person. However, take a minute and ask yourself, does this solve anything? The answer is no. Instead of cursing, take a deep breath and recognize your emotions. Ask yourself, why am I reacting this way? This not only helps you understand the deeper reasons behind your immediate reaction, but also lays the groundwork for developing more positive responses in the future. Remember, giving up cursing is not just about changing a language habit. It's about restructuring how we react to the world around us. 
a challenging but rewarding journey toward inner freedom and control. By removing negative speech and cursing from our daily lives, we're not only affirming our patience and personal resilience, but also creating a positive environment. This journey is worth every step, offering not just inner peace, but also the strength to overcome any challenge. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Have you ever tried to quit the habit of cursing? What methods have you applied to control your speech? Share your story or any tips you found helpful in this process. Don't hesitate to leave a comment below and join the conversation with us. Habit number three, gossip. One of the sins or categories we often tend to minimize is related to the mouth or speech. However, perhaps the most common way to sin is the misuse of words. It's very easy, almost without thinking, for us to engage in trivial chatter, gossip, lying, exaggeration, malicious attacks, and unkind observations with our tongues. We can make the following mistakes, spreading hate, inciting others to fear and hypocrisy, disseminating misinformation, encouraging temptation, discouraging teaching, falsehoods, and destroying reputations. There's no doubt that we can cause serious harm through our speech. But with this ability, we can also do a lot of good. We can also cause harm due to our omissions, as we often remain silent when we should speak. We do not correct the mistakes of those around us, but we should address them carefully and gently on the journey toward tranquility and morality. According to Stoicism, gossiping is not just a habit that betrays the search for inner steadfastness, but also a strong reminder of the power and danger of speech. Words can build bridges of empathy, but can also become weapons of division and pain. Choose silence when necessary, but not the silence of indifference or fear. Rather, a meaningful silence reflects self-control and respect for oneself and others. When we speak, let each word reflect care, sincerity, and a desire to share knowledge, encouragement, and love. Eliminating this habit requires a high degree of self-awareness and a commitment to living a meaningful life. This is not just an act of renunciation, but also an act of acceptance, accepting the responsibility for the power of our words and their impact on the world around us. Habit number four, jealousy. Jealousy, according to a study in the US, 42% of respondents admitted that they felt jealous of their colleagues at least once a week. However, in reality, this number could be higher than just once a week. When you feel jealous of others, it is the fastest factor to destroy your self-confidence because at that moment, you only look at the strengths of others and your weaknesses. One thing I realized is that jealousy is not only when you see others having something you don't, but jealousy is also the feeling that you think the other person does not deserve what they have. So the advice I want to offer is, don't be jealous of others, learn from them. This is not wrong, but I wonder how many people can do this. When we are jealous of someone, a part of our subconscious does not acknowledge that the person is skilled. Then how can we learn from them? These numbers and reflections open a door for us to reconsider the emotion of jealousy more deeply. Indeed, jealousy not only loses one's self-confidence, but also obscures the ability to see the real value in each person, including oneself. Instead of admiring negatively, why don't we transform that emotion into motivation to improve and develop ourselves? Stoic philosophy teaches us that each of us has the inner power to overcome these negative emotions. Instead of being envious of others' success, we should focus on creating value and success for ourselves. Jealousy brings no benefits. It is just a barrier that prevents personal progress and true happiness. Remember, the success of others is not your loss. In this vast world, there is enough space for each of us to grow and shine in our way. When you start to see the success of others as an inspiration instead of a rival, you will open a new path for self-improvement and happiness. Therefore, instead of nurturing jealousy, spend your time and energy building a life you are proud of. Look within to find your strength and potential. This is the path to peace and inner strength, a life not dependent on comparison and envy, but a life lived fully and meaningfully. Habit number five, judging. 
From the very first moment we come into contact with someone, our natural reaction is not only to automatically process information about that person, but also to form opinions about them, either positive or negative. Are they a friend or foe? Can I trust this person? Or is their friendly appearance just superficial? In most cases, this judgmental behavior occurs subconsciously beyond our control or awareness. Such judgments have a significant impact on deciding whom we want to befriend and whom we want to avoid. But it doesn't stop there. Judgmental behavior also influences our perceptions of right and wrong morally. However, at the same time, it is also a cause of personal bias issues. For example, we often attribute our mistakes to external factors because others treated us poorly or because the guidance from our superiors was unclear. Meanwhile, we believe the bad behavior of others originates from their character. Sometimes, out of fear, we may perceive others as evil or toxic to the extent that we are ready to harm them in return. Sometimes, an unfamiliar characteristic of the other person, such as skin color, religion, or nationality, is enough for us to deem them inferior to ourselves. Stoicism teaches us that each judgmental act reflects not only a lack of understanding and arrogance, but also a waste of our time and energy on things that bring no value or progress. Stoicism emphasizes focusing on controlling what is within our capability, how we react to the world around us, rather than trying to judge or control things beyond our reach. To truly eliminate the habit of judgment, we need to develop deep understanding and tolerance. This starts with recognizing that every person has their own story, challenges and efforts that only they fully understand. Instead of hastily drawing conclusions based on superficial observations, let's open our hearts and learn more about others. Remember, in every act of judgment, we not only alienate others, but also lose the opportunity to learn and grow ourselves. We are eager to hear your thoughts on this topic. Have you eliminated judgment from your daily life? Please share your deep insights in the comments. We have just explored the habit of procrastination, a major obstacle on the path to self-improvement and personal effectiveness. But the journey doesn't stop here, and we couldn't continue without offering our sincerest thanks to you, those who have accompanied us to this point. Your support and patience are an invaluable source of motivation that allows us to continue creating valuable and meaningful content. Now we will move on to Habit 6. This is another challenge that we must face and overcome to live a fuller and more meaningful life. Let's continue this journey together, discover how we can change ourselves bit by bit to become the best version of ourselves. Habit number six, complaining. Complaining, before we delve into habit number six, let's look at the following story. A man walks into a beautiful park and angrily says as he walks out, this place is filthy and stinks. I will never come here again. Another person enters the park at the same time and when leaving has a happy expression on their face. How beautiful. There are flowers everywhere and the air is filled with a refreshing fragrance. Why does the same park elicit completely different reactions from these two individuals? It turns out that the first person found a lot of garbage in the park upon entering. To prove that the park was dirty, he searched for trash under the flowers everywhere, focusing all his attention on the garbage just to see the filth of the park. Meanwhile, the other person, while walking in the park, always kept his eyes on the plants and the beautiful scenery. Although he also saw the trash, he did not pay attention to it. He devoted his full attention to feeling the vitality of spring, sensing the beauty of nature and life. This park is a symbol of the world. These two individuals represent two completely different ways of thinking, complaining and gratitude, as well as two fates of failure and success. The difference between the first man and the second lies not only in how they perceive the park, but also in how they choose to live their lives. Stoicism teaches us that in any situation, we have the choice of how we view and respond to it. Instead of complaining about troubles and injustices, we are encouraged to accept them and look for solutions, and above all, to find joy and meaning in every moment in this vast world full of beauty and challenges. Let's choose to be grateful, accepting, and loving individuals. 
Life is not just a journey of living and existing, but also a journey of transformation and evolution. Choose your thoughts and actions wisely, for those choices will shape your life. Habit number seven, delaying. You have a lot of work to do, but instead of focusing on completing it, you indulge in procrastination habits, letting yourself get distracted with trivial things. Things like texting, browsing social media, watching YouTube, sorting through emails. You know you should be working, but you don't feel like doing it, lack motivation, or don't know where to start, except for instances where you need time to make better decisions. Procrastination is a harmful habit, negatively impacting the quality of your work and life. Professor of Psychology Joseph Ferrari at Dio University in Chicago found that about 20% of adults are procrastinators. Surprisingly, this number is higher than those suffering from depression, obsessive-compulsive disorder, panic attacks, and alcohol addiction. Procrastination occurs in people of all genders, races, and ages without discrimination. Procrastination is not just about delaying a specific task. It reflects our inability to control our lives, manage time, and prioritize work. By procrastinating, we are giving up our power to create change, to live a meaningful life, and to achieve our goals. Stoic philosophy teaches us about the importance of living in the present, focusing on what we can control. Marcus Aurelius once said, Do every act of your life as if it were your last. From this perspective, procrastination is a form of surrender, a refusal to take responsibility for our lives. To break free from the cycle of procrastination, we need to practice self-awareness and self-management. Start by setting specific, measurable, and time-bound goals. Break the work into manageable steps to avoid feeling overwhelmed. Focus on creating a daily work habit, even if it's a small amount of work, to build momentum and maintain productivity. Don't let today pass without moving toward your goals. Every small action today will be a solid foundation for tomorrow's success. Make every moment and every action meaningful, and you will find the strength to overcome procrastination, moving closer to living a life true to Stoic philosophy. If you're ready to give up the habit of procrastination, like and share our channel to express your agreement with our viewpoint. Habit number eight, approval seeking. At our core, we are social beings. However, this should not lead us to live in constant search of approval from others. Sometimes our need for recognition and approval can drive us to an unconscious desire to fill an inner void or emotional lack. Why do I always seek the approval of others? If you find that this attitude defines the way you live, try to shift your position to connect with your inner criteria. What are the reasons you are stuck in this situation, and how can you break this inertia to discover your inner joy? Seeking approval not only reflects a lack of confidence and certainty in oneself, but also signifies a dependency on the opinions of others to define personal value. This is a path to insecurity, and never truly finding inner peace. Instead of allowing public opinion to control our lives, we should focus on building a solid foundation of self-confidence and independence where our value is not dependent on external evaluation. Ask yourself, what matters to me and what values do I want my life to reflect? The answers to these questions will lead you to true freedom, where external approval becomes irrelevant. You will begin to see that happiness and peace come from living authentically with yourself and pursuing your own goals and passions not from the approval of others. Stoic philosophy advises us to live a life free from social pressures and unnecessary expectations, guiding us to find joy and satisfaction within ourselves. When you stop seeking approval from others and start living according to your values and principles, you will discover true strength and inner peace. Habit number nine, overindulging. In modern life, Everything seems to be designed to encourage us to overindulge. From constant shopping ads on social media to enticing promotional programs that make it easy for us to fall into the trap of overconsumption. This is a vivid example of the anti-stoic lifestyle, where seeking happiness through material means leads to an endless cycle of craving and never being satisfied. 
Stoic philosophy teaches us about contentment within the soul and encourages a simple life where we learn to appreciate what we have and realize that true happiness is not about shopping more owning more. Marcus Aurelius, one of the great Stoic philosophers, once said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Take the example of my roommate, whose overshopping is just a manifestation of seeking happiness in material things, a futile effort to fill a spiritual void. When you decide to buy a new outfit not because you need it, but just to feel something new, you're losing the value of self-control and self-mastery, two core principles of Stoic philosophy. Each action and decision of ours should be guided by reason and self-control, not by fleeting emotions or external urges. Practicing self-discipline and living a meaningful life that is not dependent on material accumulation is an important step to finding inner peace and true happiness. Reflecting on my friend's case and his words, every month I try hard and can only save a few million. With that, I can never afford a house, so why bother saving? We see a defeatist mentality and pursuit of instant gratification, a lifestyle opposite to stoic teachings. This is an important lesson about living purposefully, not being swayed by desires and negative habits, but instead nurturing independence and inner strength. Habit number 10. Pessimism. Pessimism often holds a power that drives us to look towards darkness and forget about the light. This not only burdens our souls but also blinds us to the wonders of life. Stoic philosophy invites us to open the door to faith and acceptance, freeing ourselves from the shackles of negative predictions. The key to overcoming pessimism lies not in denying all difficulties, but in facing them courageously and seeking seeds of growth within each challenge. Stoicism teaches us not only how to endure, but also how to turn suffering into strength and darkness into dawn. Premeditatio malorum, the exercise of imagining the worst possible outcomes, is not meant for us to succumb to fear, but to discover inner strength and prepare mentally for any scenario. However, the real strength to confront pessimism lies in unwavering faith in oneself and an open future. When life poses difficult questions, respond not with fear, but with courage. Instead of seeking reasons for disappointment, seek growth opportunities. Every challenge is a stepping stone. Every day is a new opportunity to reaffirm faith in oneself and the power of optimism. Conquering pessimism does not mean denying reality, but learning to accept it with a steadfast mindset and gratitude. It's recognizing that although we cannot control everything in life, we always can choose how to respond. By abandoning negative thoughts and embracing stoic philosophy, we not only find happiness and peace, but also open up space for unlimited personal growth and creativity.